So as I currently record this video, there is no longer ice on the lake, which is great, but uh, after the ice went out, unfortunately, we have not had a solid warming trend to really get those water temps going in a positive direction to get those bass moving up and where they need to be. So unfortunately for now, I'm just going to work on some videos and kind of reflect on ice fishing a little bit and, and hopefully have some tips to offer uh, throughout this video. Now, what you see here is my dad and I doing some ice fishing for basin crappie in late February. Now, the fish were pretty well settled into the basin at this point, and we were very fortunate to find a really good school of them that was in the same spot consistently. Um, now, these videos kind of take place over the course of a couple of days, and the reason I titled this video Why Markham's Matter is mostly because my dad wasn't fishing with a flasher unit this whole time where I was. And in the course of these three days, I outfished him about 55 fish to three. Now that's not because I'm sponsored by Markham or anything like that. It's just, if you're wanting to put more fish on the ice, you need to have a way to see what's going on uh, below you and see what the fish are doing and how they're reacting to your lure. So here you see dad catch one and in this clip, he was actually looking at my Markham because of the way that the um, the way that the flasher reads in the cone shape. It was able to pick up his lure a little bit, so we could see how the fish was reacting. And we had one come in really hot, and it and it hit his. I knew it was going to hit one of ours based on the way that it came in. Now, essentially, what's going on here is there's nothing going on on the bottom. We're just in a deep part of the lake where these fish have settled in. Now, what's really interesting about this spot is those fish are generally suspended about a foot off the bottom, but you cannot catch them in that location. You have to wait for them to either move up to feed, or you have to wait for them to either cruise through, or different groups of fish to cruise through in order to eat. Um, when you were fishing for those fish in that school on the bottom, they were just very inactive and very lethargic. But when you'd see one come through on your Markham, higher up in the water column most likely it was ready to eat or you could entice it to eat um so that was really interesting to watch the the fish behavior on the markham as they were relating to uh, what we were doing and how i was presenting my lure to these fish so as you can see there were a lot of crappie to be had and unfortunately in this video there are no giant crappie to, that are caught. There's just a lot of eater crappie in between seven and 10 inches at the most. Um, and we let several of these crappie go as we were fishing. If you know, if they were way too small, like in that four or five inch range, but a lot of them we were keeping, um, because who doesn't enjoy fresh fish in the winter? Now that's not to say that we kept an excessive amount and we were filling the five gallon bucket every time, but um, it was definitely good to have some fresh fish. So a nice little crappie there. Uh, another interesting thing about us fishing in this location was that there was a pretty solid mix of white and black crappie. Now, I wasn't really expecting that because uh, previously, as I've explored fishing basin crappie, the predominant species of crappie uh, in the basin are white crappie because they like to roam more, they're more pelagic, whereas i found in my experience that those black crappie are more structure oriented. Now that's not to say that we couldn't have been adjacent to a piece of structure out here, but at the same time, there was a pretty good mix of both. Um, and we caught several bluegill throughout the course of, of fishing here. So it was just crappie and bluegill, uh, and pretty much nothing else. There were no bass, there were no catfish or anything weird. It would have been cool if there were some perch to be thrown in there. There used to be some perch in this lake, but uh, there aren't really any more. Now, I didn't include every single clip of, of us catching a fish. That would be kind of ridiculous and get kind of old. I mean, over the course of the time that I recorded these videos, I mean, we caught maybe 50 fish, 60 fish um, total. So, I mean, here you're seeing just a snippet of it. And the third day we were out there, I forgot the camera, so... I didn't even include that uh, footage because I couldn't have gotten any of the footage anyway. <laughs> so another nice little crappie here, just good little eater size, nothing special by any means. Um, 
but it was pretty interesting to just really get down there, watch the way that the fish behaved, and see how they were reacting to the presentation that we had to offer. It also seemed to be like uh, spoons were the ticket. Now, um, something that I've grown a lot of confidence in over this ice fishing season is uh, little spoons for panfish versus like a little tungsten jig or even something like um, like a Swedish pimple type lure. Now, that's not to say that those don't have a place and that those don't work because they, they totally do. But it seemed like the fish over the course of these three days were reacting much better to the spoon. And the spoon that I've used uh, all season, the one I caught the giant crappie on, um, I've grown so much in my confidence in that lure and I've caught so many different species of fish on that lure. I think that particular spoon has caught um, bass, walleye, crappie, bluegill, and catfish um, throughout the course of this season at some point. Just lots of, lots of panfish, just over and over. Pretty much that's what this whole video consists of. At this point, we ran out of LP gas, so Dad was grabbing the next tank quick as I uh, hooked on to a fish here. So unfortunately, he missed out on that one. But uh, we just had to get the shack worn back up. These days were pretty chilly. I mean, we were talking lows in the tens, which I know for northern folk are not that bad. But for us down here in southern Iowa, generally speaking, you know, those are nighttime lows, not daytime lows. So over the course of the winter, we, we experienced some of the coldest weather that, that I've seen in my time here in southern Iowa. Now, that's not to say that it hasn't gotten colder or that it couldn't get colder. And that's not to say that it doesn't get colder up north either. Also, another interesting thing that I found as the day progressed that um, wasn't apparent right away and, and didn't really happen until it really started to get darker is we were struggling to get those fish to commit to our presentations. And one of the things that we did to stop that or to essentially get those fish to commit was we started using more waxworms or bigger waxworms and that was even even carried over into the last day of our fishing where we were really struggling to get some good fish to hit and we couldn't get anything to commit unless there was two waxworms or a really large waxworm on the hook itself as those fish uh, were messing with it. If there was one, they generally didn't want anything to do with it. If there was two, then they were they were pretty they were pretty much guaranteed to bite if they came up and were interested in that lure. Another quality little white crappie there, perfect for the frying pan. Black crappie. Uh, as you can see, we're just really getting into the fish, um, and Dad and I. And well, me more than dad because of the way that the Markham was going, but it's fortunate that I got that one because he popped off right at the hole. So again, just the lightest little bites and, and getting those fish to commit, it was not easy because it was, it was such a light bite. And you had to almost be mo just barely twitching that rod as those fish were coming up and ready to eat. You know, who knows how long they'd sit there and investigate it. You know, sometimes I could bring those fish up four foot in the water column and then they would just drop back down like it was no big deal and wouldn't even care. And then sometimes they'd come screaming in and, and hit it as you were jigging up and you'd have to reel up to catch up to where the fish was was at. Another nice little black crappie there, perfect for the frying pan. Hooked up again with a good fish. And at this point, I think you guys have seen enough fish uh, between Dad and I catching them all. Um, it was it was good to get out with Dad and good to catch some fish for the frying pan. Um, 
you know, we had some of those crappie about a week ago and, and they were really good. And there's nothing wrong with taking fish out of a body of water. Just make sure that you are being conscious of the resource and how you utilize that resource. Uh, selective harvest is something that is talked about and not talked about enough in the context of conservation of a fish species. Um, and what selective harvest is, is essentially you're putting the biggest fish back to put those good genes back in the water because those fish did something special to get that size. And then essentially uh, you're keeping the smaller fish to limit that the amount of competition that those big fish have in order to grow. Uh, anyway, that's all I got for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed this video and hopefully you took away some helpful tips and tricks. Uh, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Um, and always be looking out for more videos.